Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome into this Thursday edition of Snaps, where we're going to preview all of the good games coming up this weekend. We do this every single Thursday. We got a lot of games to get through. We don't have a ton of time today. We're very excited for our boy Aaron Murray calling a Friday game, uh, but it does mean that you know everything's a bit truncated here a little bit as we record during the week. Uh, we will still be bringing you Saturday reaction shows, everything else. All right, let's dive in, Aaron, and let's start with Utah and Oregon State, the game that is leading into your game, BYU-Cincinnati on Friday. Um, a battle of the two best defenses in the Pac-12. Is that fair yeah. to say? UCLA fans may be mad, but I, I feel comfortable saying that. Is Cam Rising playing? God, I know, I dude. Know. I know. I, know. Do we, should we, I think I think we should just give up hope. Should we just vow not to talk about it until he actually plays a game? Like, no, no, should we just but, move on? This is where, and Kyle Winningham's the man, but this is where Kyle yeah. Winningham's kind of pissing me off. He's getting too cute with this bullshit. Cam yeah. Rising was in pads last pregame. I know. He spent I the know. first half in pads, and then he comes out the second half in gym shorts and a t-shirt. Like, what the fuck, man? Just yeah. either play him or don't. Like, this is big yeah. boy football. This ain't Little League, uh, subterfuge, like, Bush League shit. I don't know. It's, it's he's, he's for like the fourth week in a row, He's reportedly splitting one's reps at practice. Eventually, you're going to have to put him in the game. Yep. And I would say this, though, Aaron, this feels like the week to do so because right mm. now, uh, Utah's offense is horrible. Uh, they are the only but they've team. They've been horrible. Pack- they've yeah. been horrible. <laughs> no, for sure. For sure. But they're the only team in the Pac 12 that is sub 200 yards passing per game. They're at 170. Uh. Um, Cam Rising. Do you last feel? Do year. you feel good? Yeah. Do you feel good enough about the defense? Like that is the question. I think that I think he is. He's he's looked at the schedule and said, "All right, Florida. I don't know what they're going to be like on offense. We can trust our 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 our, our defense." Um, UCLA, the next big game last week. Freshman quarterback. I think we'll be fine with our defense. What we're doing at home too. Boom. They've they found a way to win these games and taking advantage of not so good offenses. Now you face an offense. That I'm not going to say he's good. But they're a pretty damn good running football team. They're number two in the Pac-12, like 224 yeah. yards per game rushing. Uh, but you also have the best rushing defense in the Pac-12. I think they only give up 50 yards per game. So like, it's going to be, once again, a low-scoring game. I don't know what the over-under on this game is. I'd probably lean towards the under. Mm-hmm. Um, DJU's been better than he was at Clemson. but He, he wasn't very super... good against Washington State last week. Yeah, though. he hasn't been super impressed. Like, he hasn't been like... The first game, I was like, oh, shit, like DJU, new team, lead, lead, everything's true. And then kind of from there, he's kind of tailed off a little bit. And like you said, did not play great last week versus Washington State. But that game was on the road, too. You're back home. But um, Utah's no. a hell of a defense. I, I still think that. Here's I the think, deal. Here's I the think deal. you give it two more weeks. If we're gonna say, I think you give it two more weeks before you bring Cam back. I don't think you bring him back this game. Bro, I don't think you're going to beat Oregon State if you don't bring him back. Um, Oregon State's defense is good enough. Like, yeah, Cam Ward might have smoked him. Oregon State will shut Nate Johnson down. And I think DJU and that offense is maybe good enough where they can have enough success against uh like like I, I think DJU's experience, unlike a Dante Moore last week, they'll have enough. And it's in Corvallis. This game is in Corvallis, yeah, it's, it's in not Corvallis. in Utah, yeah. right? So no, I think I think if Cam Rising doesn't play, I think that a Utah offense will have no success like it's been no, having. And I think that DJU and Oregon State will have enough success to win that game. Now, I'm willing to flip all of that if Cam Rising plays. I mean, like I said, they're throwing for 170 a game right now. Last year, Cam Rising, it was 250. They're averaging 22 points a game right now. Last year, Cam Rising, it was 38. So yeah. to me, that is everything. Does he play? Does he not? We'll see. I think the rust factor, but I, I'm with you. Like, I don't, I would take a rusty cam rising who's maybe not as mobile as he was last year but at least allows me to throw the football over kind of what they're doing right now for for utah i'm with you like if if cam rising plays i would lean towards utah i think if cam rising doesn't play there's no chance in hell like oregon state didn't have a great game defensively last week cam ward had the game of his life i mean the guy he could he couldn't miss i mean it was just one of those special moments where you're at home and everything just clicks I don't think that has anything to do with the defense. I think it's just this is a still a great defense that wasn't their day, and it was Cam Ward's once again game of his of his, of his life. Um, this is a defense that's going to be home Friday night. A lot of excitement, going to bring the juice. They know Utah can't do shit on offense, yeah. so you know they're licking their chops right now to get a revenge game. 
so yeah, this is all comes down to Cam Rising no go. You're probably gonna lose, but I still think the question is, does does Winningham believe even if I lose this game, if I give Cam two more weeks to get healthy Can't before the, the 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 meat of our schedule? That we could still go eleven and one possibly. No, this is the meat. This is the meat. They're in the meat. Yeah, I know. Like it's I refuse. It. Yeah. It's, it is. They have. To, I I think he needs to play. All right. Next on the list, we got you. I think he needs to play too, but he's coming off a fucking ACL injury. Like you just can't put him out there because you want him to. Like he has then, to be able to then, perform. Then why, then why is he? Then why is he taking first team reps for four weeks straight now? Why are you splitting half the first team reps with a guy that ain't going to play? So why are you dress him out? Pre- why you? Why are you dress? If you're him not going to play him, he should him. be getting first team reps. Yeah, if exactly. he ain't playing, he should be getting first team reps. It's because they they don't want him to be too rusty, so they're trying to like bring him along slowly. But okay, the time is now. I know he I wants so. to play. Let him play. Um, next on the list, UGA Auburn. As I said on yesterday's show. Last week, I called Iowa Penn State an NPC game because, um, you know, uh, in that game, Penn State was the main player. Like, Iowa was never going to win. There was just, it was all about how does Penn State look against maybe a good defense. This is that UGA, this, that this week. UGA is a player character. Auburn is the NPC. I give the Auburn Tigers a literal 0% chance of winning this game. Literal zero, absolute zero. Um, there is no, possible way in hell that Auburn's awful offense is going to have any, they have the two worst quarterbacks in the sec. Spencer Rattler may be the best quarterback in the sec, and he could barely make a dent in this UJ defense. So Auburn's not going to win. All this comes down to is how does the player character Carson Beck look yeah. going against the boss here? How does, how does he go into Jordan here? Cause this Auburn defense is pretty salty Aaron. Yeah, no, they are. They are. No, no, like I, I agree. Like I, I think, and I will take a, a, a step back. We on our show yesterday, we kind of went into the best defenses, stop rate right in the country. Obviously, Georgia's been up there, has a ton of turnovers, has forced a lot of punts. To me, there are still a lot of questions about the defense. Can oh. they stop the off? Can they stop the run? I mean, are they physical up front? That that front seven. Can they get after the quarterback? Like this is an Auburn team that's going to commit to the run. It's actually a pretty darn good running football team. That their offense lines played well this year. They got some good running backs. Both their quarterbacks, while they can't throw really well, they can both run pretty well. Um, can you just can you line up and consistently stop the run and play big boy football, which Georgia's been really good at the past two years? But I still think people question how good that defensive line is. Flip it over to the offense. Yeah, all, all eyes will be on Carson Beck. Your offensive and line Mike is playing Bobo really well. And everything else, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the but it, it goes through the quarterback. Like, Edwards is back. You're running the ball really well. Bell right. looks good when he runs the football. Brock is coming off the best game of, of, of the season last week. Receivers are improving. I don't know if Ladd's going to play or not. Like, that's – I don't think you, he needs to play in this game for them to win. But can Carson go on the road, be effective, continue not to turn the ball over – Get the ball into his playmaker's hands, and I think he's a I, he's he is shown to me, and I know they've been home games, and I know T. Bob they've been against scrubs, but he's shown to me that he's a very mature quarterback. Okay, I know that's not sexy, I know that's not exciting, but he understands the offense. He takes care of the football, and he gets it to his playmakers, and he doesn't make mistakes. I think I think that will try along with how good their offensive line is playing, and with Edwards healthy at the running back position, that will travel well to Auburn. And yep. silence that crowd some somewhere in the second quarter, beginning of third quarter. I think they, I, I think Georgia jumps on them pretty early. Yeah, conservative. You know, y- yes, everything you said is something that does travel well. When you talk about things that are replicable outside of your home stadium, Carson Beck style would seem to be that. Um, again, though, let's be clear: if he, if if the Georgia offense comes out and looks really good, they do deserve a lot of credit here because this is an Auburn defense that is twenty fourth in the country in stop rate. Um, yep. You think about last week against Texas A&M, that was an offense with Connor Wigman that was rolling, and they were getting shut down before uh, Max Johnson came the game. They're fifth in the SEC. Auburn is allowing just 16 points a game. So, so I look, like I said I mean, the other third, day. The third, the third in the SEC in, in pass yards given up per game. I mean, they're only giving up 164 yards per game. Florida's at one at 162. Uh, A&M's at 164 too. So, I mean, they're, they're technically tied there for number two pass defense in the SEC. This is my favorite. This is the first time this season where I'm really looking forward to a Georgia game. And maybe I was guilty of undervaluing South Carolina, and I'll accept that. But like, I, I do think that you can actually learn some things about Beck in the offense oh, yeah. this weekend, which is great. Yeah. Um, 
Next on the list. Would you would can... you would you take them the would you take them the cover? I know you got my I already bed, did. I... Yes, I already did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. F- no, I bro, you cost bro. me half a point. You cost me half a point. You cost me half a point. And you cost me two points on the under for Florida versus Kentucky. And I gained you two and a half points elsewhere. Where? Look, I'll show you, I'll show I mean, are we, this is such a fucking pointless thing to spend time on for <laughs> the show, like, but now you do it. No, no, but now, after. no, but now you've pissed me off. Uh, Michigan went from bookie. 18, Michigan went from 18 to 17. Okay. okay. So I got you a point there. Thank you. Um, the over, which you were originally going to bet was, I think like 55 and having went down to 54. It's a point and a half there. Yeah. Okay. So suck it. Shut up. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, okay, your, your bookie <laughs> smokes too much weed. <laughs> no, no. Okay, well, no. Okay, well, well, no, because no, I resent that because I smoke an incredibly responsible adult <laughs> amount of weed. I was talking about that the other day. Like, at a certain uh, point, when it comes to drugs, you got to be an adult. Okay, we can't yeah. be out here just like smoking blunts all the time. You got to do responsible Mm-mm. amounts of drugs when you become a parent. Okay, and that's what I do. So I resent them. I'm a medicinal card holder for Louisiana. Thank you very much. For a limited time, you can save up to 40% off on an NFL Plus Premium annual subscription when you sign up through Plus Play from Verizon. Plus Play. It is a platform where you can shop, manage, and save on the subscriptions you already love, like NFL Plus. With NFL Plus Premium, You get access to live games on mobile, NFL Red Zone, NFL Network, and more. So you can watch multiple games all at once on any screen around you for updates. Never miss a touchdown. That simple. And for fantasy players, NFL Plus Premium makes all the difference. Access to programming like Fantasy Live through the NFL Network. Red Zone for tracking player performances on a Sunday. Access to live local and primetime games. Access to Fantasy Plus. Just go to verizon.com slash NFL to get NFL Plus Premium today. 40% off, that's 40% off an annual subscription, just $59.99 for the full season. Get it before it's gone. What's up, y'all? T-Bob here from Snaps, daily college football show that I hope you really enjoy. And I've been getting a lot of crap on my show lately about, you know, uh, uh, choosing Alabama over Texas. You know what I didn't do, though? I didn't bet on him. You know who I did bet on? Kansas, okay? And I did it on the DraftKings Sportsbook app because when it comes on where I like to gamble, I love the DraftKings app. And it's because they got incredible offers. If you're already a DraftKings customer, well, check this out. Every single NFL game day during September, you're not going to have just one, but two new offers waiting on you when you sign in. So you'll have to sign sign in to see exactly what those offers are. But just remember, Thursday, Sunday, Monday, every NFL game day, all customers getting two exciting offers from DraftKings to play with. It's a ton of fun. But what if you're a new customer? Well, I've got an even better deal for you. You use the promo code TBOB when you sign up. Okay. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, promo code TBOB, T B O B. You bet $5 on any NFL game, you get $200 instantly in bonus bets. That's right. That's right. Put five down on any of the games. Don't have to win. You get $200 instantly in bonus bets. You can go play with those on college football, NFL, whatever you want. You can play with those. That's one of those incredible deals. You get. So you see it. There's not a more fun place to get in on the action than DraftKings. And you can do all your same game parlays, multi-game parlays, whatever you want. So download the app now. Sign up with the promo code TBOB, T-B-O-B, $5. Gives you $200 in bonus bets instantly. And for returning customers, remember, every NFL game day, two exciting new offers. From your official sports betting partner of the NFL DraftKings, the crown is yours. I go to a freaking pharmacy and get my weed. Okay, uh, I don't. I no longer have to go to the train tracks and feel like I'm about to get arrested. Uh, <laughs> God, I used to hate buying drugs by the train tracks. It's an awful feeling. <laughs> um, speaking of the train tracks, seems like uh, I don't know. I think of Kansas when I think of trains. Kansas taking the train down to Austin to take on the Longhorns. Uh, this is a prove-it game. 
for Texas here. I feel good about hopping on this game at plus 18. It's now down to 16 and a half. So a lot of money rolled in on Kansas Ooh. here early on. I love Lance Leipold. I love Jalen Daniels. I mm. really like this Jayhawk team. Are they as talented as uh, Texas? Not in the slightest. But this is the exact game in the past that Texas would screw up. Yeah, but I, I said this before. I said this before the, the Alabama game. And I brought up the stats of, of of rushing quarterbacks last season, and you kind of laughed at me about it. And I said, I feel good about Texas because of this. Like they last year did a pretty good job against rushing quarterbacks. And and they if you go back to the game versus, versus Kansas last year on the road, they won 55 to 14 and they shut down the True. run. I True. mean, they, they dominated it. They I think they only gave up 104 yards rushing, 3.5 yard good average point. in that massive wins. So like and this is a better defense this year. And I would say, like, go look at the data points. Every rushing quarterback they faced last year, the majority of the time, they had extreme success. Um, is, it year, Daniels, is it fair to call Jalen Daniels? Is it fair to call Jalen Daniels? But if you look at their offense, quarterback? no, 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 no. He's not a pure rushing quarterback. Like, he's not. The difference is, is Alabama, like, that is Milrow's. Not, like, his, it's all 80% of his game is rushing. Yeah, yeah. Or throwing the deep ball. Like, no, no. Like, like, he can he can mix it up. He can throw these. I mean, seventy five percent completion percentage quarterback. But when you look at their offense, and you go back even watch them last week versus BYU, some of the stuff they were doing in the third and fourth quarter, which will give a lot of defenses trouble, is essentially like the triple option from the gun, where hmm. you incorporate the quarterback. You can hand it off. He can pull it. He can get on the edge. He can pitch it to a running back. A lot of that stuff, as we know, when you face like an army and a, 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 a navy stuff like that. It's tough to to master going against that type of offense in just a week. So like maybe Kansas can have some sort of success with that early on where you can get some explosive runs uh, to kind of get Texas on their heels a little bit. I just don't know. Uh, I just think Texas, to me, is too good up front defensively. I think they're pretty good in the secondary as well. Uh, and you know how I feel about their offense. Like I love Kansas, and I, I do think Kansas can keep it within three scores. But I, I just don't see Texas kind of – they're not the same team, man. This is a different Texas breed of football this year. I don't see them losing a game like this. Yeah, I don't – I don't. to be fair, I don't see them losing either. And because I think Kansas is good, if it was close, I'd be happy to win. But I wouldn't, like, lord that over Texas' head. Uh, all no. Texas needs to do here is avoid losing. Because, again, I think Kansas is good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, don't know, Aaron. They, you kind of made me feel those are some really good data points that you just gave though on the running quarterback thing. Like you made me feel kind of bad about this bet now. What they do? Uh, versus, Texas held Alabama to 170 yards, 3.1 yard average. Well, I think Jalen Daniels is a much better quarterback than Jalen Miller. Though. Much better passer, much better passer. But Alabama's offensive line is also better than Kansas' offensive line. And the game was <laughs> maybe the game was in yeah. I don't fucking know. The game, the game was also in, in Tuscaloosa. This game is yeah, in yeah. I know, you know, I know, the I know. The fan, the fan, I think, I think, I think Texas fans for how much of a wine and cheese crowd it is there in Austin, I do think that they're feeling like this could be a pretty special year. I think you're going to get a pretty rowdy crowd. Uh, I feel more like it's a venture capital and sucking young people's blood crowd uh, because ah, it's a bad joke. I was trying to do like a tech thing but I couldn't quite figure it out on the fly. Um, all right, next on this list, uh, LSU Ole Miss. Uh, I dove into some Ole Miss film, Aaron, and here's the deal. This is a weird game, okay, because LSU is objectively better at every position. I mean, not, 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 not hugely, but like objectively, they are better everywhere. But we talked about it on yesterday's show. LSU's defense is so fucking sketchy. 107th in stop rate. I saw a, a an Arkansas team that, despite losing, like, you know, despite kind of giving up a lot of pass rush, th having a big turnover, I still saw K.J. Jefferson and an Arkansas team that I didn't think was that good dominate this defense for pretty much the entire game. So, like, it's a weird thing where LSU is without a doubt more talented than Ole Miss, but the game's in Oxford. Jackson Dart and Ole Miss represent mm -hmm. K.J. Jefferson and Arkansas, but better. Lane Kevin better, right? And LSU is just so undisciplined when it comes to the fundamentals of zone coverage in the back end that I find it hard to trust them here. That's why the spread is two and a half. Just on a pure yeah. talent basis, it shouldn't be that close. But LSU's defense is just such a glaring Achilles heel right now. I know it's crazy. It's great. But but I mean, 
Ole Miss is, I still don't know if they have an identity throwing the football right now. Like, I, they don't have the guys on the outside that, that can actually kill you, but neither did Arkansas. So that, that, that does concern yeah. me a little bit. But, but, but Lane wants to run the football. And for, you know, for some reason, it's not for some reason that the reason is their offensive line's not physical. Yeah. You know, why, why did I say Alabama was going to win and Alabama was going to cover next, last week? It's because Ole Miss on tape is not physical at the line of scrimmage, offensive no, line bro. or defensive line. They looked and awful where is, against Tulane. And where Tulane is, once again, and where is LSU a physical football team? You and I have talked about it. They have the best offensive line in the SEC. Very yeah, physical. Not even front. close. Getting digs at the running back position right now has completely transformed this offense into not just, hey, Daniels, be a throw and a runner. We can actually hand the ball off to a running back, and he can go get 97 yards like he did last week versus Arkansas. Like That has opened this offense up to a point where Jaden can just sit back there and get Malik Neighbors the ball, get Lacey the football, get Taylor the football the tight end position. Like, actually, Brian offense, Thomas is the other one. It's Brian Neighbors Thomas and is Thomas right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah those Thomas. are the two right now. But but Ole Miss won't win games because they're not physical in the trenches. And I and I, I get the worry about LSU secondary. I get the worry about this game being in Oxford, but it goes back to the the old like we play football. If you get your ass whooped in the trenches, you're not gonna win football games. Yeah. And I don't believe in Ole Miss's offensive line. And 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 Juckin still is a running back that's averaging what, like four yards per carry right now? Three and a half. Three and a half. And the best part is people are like, oh, it's because he's hurt. And I'm like, well, yeah, yes. the offensive line sucks. But yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I would also sucks. like to put a hypothesis out there. And the, the O-line is garbage. And, and they have terrible. been. Um, I mean, like, but I think KJ, okay, they, KJ also had success. Like, Arkansas also had success last week because KJ ran the ball well. Yes, but Jackson Dart can do that. That's but I'm my just saying fear. Jackson's going to have to do that, though. Yes. He's going to have to have a big game running if they want to keep it close. No, that is my big fear because yep. I was guilty of, although Arkansas's O-line did look better than Ole Miss's on tape, I yes. was guilty of thinking, I, I wait, like, like I said, my fly and my prediction ointment was I disrespected KJ in that Arkansas offensive line. So I'm a little hesitant to want to do the same thing a second week in a row against Jackson Dart Ole Miss. All that said... I do like LSU to cover the two and a half here. If they don't, then Brian Kelly's got some major questions to answer. Do you, do you think it was LSU looking at that spread, looking at what Arkansas was, and just kind of not not playing up to their potential? And this, that was kind of a wake up call to me. Well, uh, uh, no, I mean because like, I mean one of the big factors was Jaden Daniels start off came out was awful. Too. No, Jaden was yeah. awful at the beginning. Yeah. Now, unlike yes. last year, he found it, right? Uh, but then the problem is the defense was actually pretty good at the beginning and got worse as the game went on. And that's where yeah. that becomes concerning. Look, Brian Kelly's big mantra this week was do your job. Um, like don't work because that's the thing. Everybody in the defense is trying to do too much. If it's a basic cover two zone, do your job. Don't worry about the quarterback running or whatever. If you have the deep third, do your job. Like, so we'll see if if any of that teaching got through. I this tell you week. what. Oh, Jalen Milro was 17 of 21 for 225 yards versus Old Mills' defense. Yeah. What do you think Jaden Daniels is going to do? Should I mean, I mean, he should he should dominate. You're talking about the the high scoring offense at the SEC right now, the highest rated passer. I mean, like, yeah, made, Jaden Daniels should go off. Milro can't can't throw a football yet. He went seventeen and twenty one. Well, okay, Milro still is sneakily the third highest rated quarterback in the league. So you know, is he? Uh, yeah, I don't know what it's, what's really? up with your boy Carson Beck. Yeah, <laughs> jeez, where are those numbers coming from? Uh, from that first game and that this last one. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. He, uh, yeah, right now it goes Daniels, Cook, Milro. Dark shout out Brady Rattler Cook, back. Shout out Brady Cook indeed, dude. Battle. I do. I just hope both these teams win so we can get like you know college game day at Missouri for the battle Goma. of the Tigers. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Um, Notre Dame, Duke. Obviously, Notre Dame mean a massive bounce back here. If Duke would win this game, all of a sudden Duke oh is God. as legitimate of a playoff team as anybody else. It's yes. gonna be a wild Wade Stadium in Raleigh. Um Duke right now the ACC is up for grabs you know we feel yeah. like Florida State has control but Duke's legitimate uh UNC has done nothing to tell me they're not legitimate um Louisville is looking sneaky good speaking of great mm -hmm. quarterback play and so it's gotten very competitive there all of a sudden and Syracuse um, 
I, I don't grant. I've done Miami. No. Oh, Miami. I'll put Miami kind of up there. I, I can't put Syracuse. I can't put Syracuse. I know. Up there. I know. I'm kidding. Uh, I like what they're doing, but we've seen this out of yeah. Dino Babers before. I like Garrett Schrader, but not. Um, what do you think here? Notre Dame Duke. Ah, oh, I mean, can, can is is I, I I would love to know what Notre Dame's practice has been like this week. Like, have they seen that we were so close and we can still get everything in front of us? And and do you feel better after a close loss like that against a powerhouse like Ohio State, or do you let that kind of take you over and 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 kind of go to shit? I, I believe that the fact that Sam Hartman is the quarterback, they should be fine. Yeah. Um, but I like Duke, man. You look at Duke this year. We went over the kind of the top defenses in the country yesterday on the show. Duke is one of the better defenses in the country. They play well. They play. Yeah, discipline. they are. They are. Uh, they are currently second in the country in stop rate. Yeah. And then Riley Leonard is is he's a game wrecker, man. Throwing the football and running the football. He's 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 worked his way into the consideration of a first round quarterback right now. So can you for Notre Dame? Can you can you put last week behind you? And can you respect Duke enough to focus this week in practice? Because you're battling two things in practice this week. You're battling the loss to Ohio State, which could derail your opportunity to make the playoffs. And you're battling brand awareness of thinking Duke is just a basketball school. And that can turn into a really bad week of practice. And then getting in bed. Eric Duke this weekend, who's a really good football team. So, you know what, though? I think we all kind of, I think it kind of, see, I think the brand thing is negated because I think we actually know that Duke is good now. Like maybe Do if Duke still? had it. Yeah, maybe if Duke hadn't won like 28 to 7 against Clemson to start the year or whatever, then we'd still be kind of flying under the radar. But no, like, and, and this is a Notre Dame team that's going to be so hungry. And as much as I like Riley Leonard and he's really good, I do think Sam Hartman's better. Um, I think it's close, but I like Notre Dame here. Also, put your AirPods back in. I can hear myself echoing. Why did you take them out in the died. first place? Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, we're back. Never mind. They didn't die. They just, uh, for some reason, Brum, lost Brum, what's computer. wrong? What do you want to say, Brum? I'm just upset with Aaron. <laughs> it was not my fault. It's a tech Speaking of, uh, you up. know, people who need to be told, do your job this week. <laughs> hey, look, Aaron's going to, Aaron is doing his job. He's going to be calling the game Friday night. I can't wait to listen, Aaron. I'm so excited. Dude. Um, no, I'm with you. I, I, Notre Dame is. I like Notre Dame. Better to win football this. team. I think, yeah, yeah, I think Notre Dame will win, but I, 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 I think Duke will make it interesting though like i don't think Notre Dame runs away with it i don't know what, what's uh, the spread in the football game right now i think they could keep it within a, i want to say it's a five and a half i would think it's yeah, five and a half like that. you would take uh duke plus the five and a half no i would stay away from the fucking line but i'm just saying i, I oh think okay it's a yeah one score game um all right and then finally the game that mm. is guaranteed to do another 10 milli because every game does 10 12. million that they play in now yeah who knows how high this one will get USC, Colorado, it's in Boulder. Hmm. So I'm at odds with myself here because when I watched film, I'm like, okay, you no, know, Beer Alexander looks better in a uniform than anybody they had last year. He looked really good. Uh, without a doubt. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Off the bat, they kind of look better. Then I see the 6'6", 200-pound Mike Linebacker Gentry, and again, I'm kind of like, ugh. Mm. And then I see Drew Pine in an awful Arizona state offense having some success. I'm like, uh, some, uh, some. Uh, eight uh, sacks, 6.7 yards per completion. Like that's, they couldn't throw it on them. They just, they, I, I will say like, I was a little concerned looking at them and their inability to stop the run at times, but Arizona state it looks so everything. bad. Try to stop, but Colorado can't run it to your point. Yeah. I say Colorado can't run it. Like this is a matchup game again. Like I do think USC on the back end was pretty damn athletic. I mean, it's hard to judge because they are. Oh, they were good Arizona last year. State. Like they are athletic on the back end, and they get after the quarterback. I mean, they're one of the best teams getting after the quarterback this year. They're the number one team for TFLs, right? Yeah, now they the are. Country. So, so that is crazy. Right now, USC stop rate. They're up to thirtieth in the country from one hundred five last year. Uh, they're number one in the country. They have forty one TFLs in four games. They're third in the country with eighteen sacks in four games. Yep. And where this gets bad for and the they're buffs, facing Colorado. So yeah, so here's block. the numbers on that, dude. Colorado currently one hundred and twenty ninth, having given up thirty four TFLs, and they are number one thirty two, literally second to last in the country. Haven't given up 23 sacks. Uh, so you want to talk about a glaring strength against a glaring weakness? 
There you have it. That said, call me an idiot. I wasn't that impressed with USC's defense. Oh, Caleb oh. Williams is incredible. Caleb Williams is perfect. Marshall Caleb Lloyd Williams. is incredible. How good does he look? He looks like yeah. a different back from what he was at US Southern South Carolina a year ago. He looks it, he looks better. It's just weird that Caleb Williams is only throwing the ball 25 times a game, but it's such a perfect 25 times that he doesn't yeah. need to do more. Like Penix is out here just winning with massive volume. Caleb Williams has a 223 passer rating. Penix is second in the country at 209. And then Hartman's the only other player in the country over 200. So, mm. like, Penix isn't just the most efficient right now. He's the most efficient by a mile. It's and uh, what did I say? Penix, excuse me. Yes, Caleb. Yeah. And you, you, you can you you okay. see that. I love Penix. And mo- yes, know. obviously. We, know. we all know. You um, but, like, Caleb, it's like this like, against Arizona State, you know, it's fourth and two. They're going for it. They jump off sides. are like, fuck it. We'll still go for it. He throws a 50-yard touchdown like it was nothing. Just a little flick yeah. of the wrist. So, USC wins, but I think their defense is so shitty that it's a good game. I think Shadur pops off, and I think that Col- – yes, they are shitty, Aaron. And yeah. I think that Colorado ends up uh, covering the 21 and a half. Did I get burned by him last week? I'm doing it again this week. So I went back this morning, and I and I rewatched the Colorado game versus Oregon last week, and Shadur was off. Like, it was a mixture of – yeah, like, the offense line's not great. They didn't protect for him. I get all that, but there were throws to be had that he was making the first three games of the season – that he wasn't making last week versus Oregon. And I don't know if if it was just a factor of, of being on the road in a tough environment. Obviously, the defense was the best defense he's faced this year. Whatever it was, but he was off. He was. He was off. He's back home. He's going. Yep. I'm going to call USC shit on defense, but a lesser defense. I think you will see a better performance from Shadur in this football game. That could make it a little bit more interesting, but... I don't so I don't know how they stop USC's offense because oh, USC's yeah. offense is better than Oregon's offense. They can run the ball more effectively with Lloyd. They got better playmakers yeah. on the outside, and Caleb Williams is an absolute freak. It sucks because if they had Travis Hunter, I would feel so much better about Colorado keeping this close because he solves the problem of giving Chidor another great weapon against what I think is a subpar defense, and he solves you know he shuts down half the field against elite offense. So. But they don't. It is what it is. Um, but like you said, if you're if, if you're an elite quarterback, like I think Shitter Sanders is, and you have a very clear area in which you need to improve, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you're going to get better there. So I think he'll be better about getting rid of the ball, like you said, at home. Uh, USC wins, but I think it's closer than Oregon. We'll see. What are you? Final call. And then we're wrapping. I think your mic cut out. Did you mute yourself? If you can't block, and I saw enough... I feel like I saw enough from USC's defense in the in the front the front seven and Bear. I don't know. I felt like you know, I, I I literally text T Bob. I was like, man, go watch last week's defensive game from USC. Cause I was like, I thought it was pretty good. I didn't think it was great. But I was I like, turn I on the, the tape. I'm like, oh shit. Okay, and you turn on, you're like, it. man, they suck. I was like, what are we watching two different <laughs> games right now? Like Arizona State threw everything out. I mean, they're doing wildcat quarterbacks, they're doing reverse passes, they're doing wildcat throws. Like they did the entire damn playbook just to try and move the football against USC. And they had success every now and then. But I saw overall worst significantly improvement from where they were from a year ago. 42 the biggest to 28. problem being stopping the run and Colorado can't run the football. I agree. Colorado is not very well suited to take advantage of this USC defense. So maybe we're on the other side of this and we think the defense looks good, but a different offense will be able to exploit this defense. Uh, I mean, my first line, defense looks better, but doesn't play much better. <laughs> there you go, dude. They do look better. Damn. Uh, I think Georgia fans, I want to go back to the Georgia game. Georgia versus Auburn this week, like the big well, question is Georgia's defensive line. Like, if 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 Barry Alexander is wearing that that red and black jersey still, I think I think a lot of Georgia fans will be feeling a little bit better about what this football team could be this year. He's he's pretty special. So there it is, your snaps week five preview. Aaron, best of luck on the call tomorrow night. Remember, um, Aaron will not be because he's working, but I will be bringing a uh, video on Friday. Me and Colin Wilson from the Action Network. You're going to be sitting down and uh, giving you some best bets over the weekend. I mean, Colin continues to just be absolutely right about everything he tells us. 
Um, and so we'll get into that. Uh, and then on Saturday, I'm sure we'll have a reaction show at some point during the day. And then obviously maybe one of those Sunday wrap up shows, but you already know the deal. Just subscribe to snaps and you'll get it all a massive. Thank you to Pat cut the Ryan Brumley, Danny Cardenas, Chris Tran, Christian Hunter, Adam Gracia, the biggest of all thank yous to you who listen every day. We love you. And we'll see you this weekend with more snaps. Thank you.